Hey, how you doing? Nope, my name's not Alfred. I'm the lawnmower lady, and I like fixing small engines. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to safely remove and sharpen the blades on this uh, little Honda commercial lawnmower. Uh, there's lots of different ways to do it, but hopefully uh, this will help you uh, do it safely and you don't cut your leg off or something like that. Follow along. So to access the blade, I'm going to turn the mower over on its right side where the oil filler cap is, not where the air filter is. The reason you don't want to turn it over on the air filter side is there's a breather tube right here, are those from the crankcase to keep it in atmospheric pressure, and they run it back through the air box. If you turn it over on that side where the air filter is, the oil will leak out. So it's always best to turn it over on the side where the oil is. And the easy way to remember that is oil comes out of the ground, it goes down, the air filter is up in the air, so the air filter goes up. The other alternative is to lift the mower up on the back side here, um, and you can prop it up with a, a jack or something, or rather jack stand. But again, the easiest way to do it is to just turn the mower over on its side, uh, again, on the oil side, and hey, and if you want to change the oil at the same time, that's a great time to do that. Uh, but this gives you full access to the underside without having to stand on your head if you had a jack stand under there. So since there's a lot of corrosion up under this motor, I'm going to use just a regular wrench rather than an impact. I don't want that to um, break off these bolts. Uh, and also, this is a, um, a blade holder. I'll put a link to this underneath. Now, heading out and buying one of these gadgets isn't, uh, you don't have to do this because, uh, as I said, with these rolled lip on these decks, it tends to sort of roll off the lip. The nut that tightens down on that thing is uh, right on the edge of that lip. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it tends to roll off in that direction. The other easy thing to do is stick a block of wood under here. This happens to be a 2 by 6 Just put your foot on it or because sometimes you can't find a good place to jam it in there uh, make sure your foot is away from the blade and then you can use that to uh, hold the blade as you tighten or loosen so there's always lots of creative ways to be safe and um, uh, not have to spend any money these weren't on very tight anyway I don't know if that's good or bad Yeah, a lot of corrosion there. All right, so here is the underside of all this. Oh, that's not too bad. So to sharpen this blade, um, you, I'm going to try to maintain this bevel, the same angle as much as possible remove as many of those divots and burrs. This will happen on both sides of the blade. All right, this one has seen some pretty significant wear and tear. It doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but certainly better than the way it is right here. Um, I use a uh, just a regular vise, all right, and put the blade in sideways. I'll be working on that edge right over there. Simple angle grinder. It's going to be noisy. if you notice when I first started I did a couple of passes just to make sure I had the right angle there uh, and then just file off the heavy birds you want to move fast and not spend too much time in one place 
because that will cause it to overheat. If it starts turning blue at the edge, you really want to move on. Don't let that happen. So, as you can see, there's still, you know, a couple of divots in there, but this is 95% better than it was. And if you look at a brand new blade, it's kind of dull anyway. So, on to the other side. move the camera here for a second because I want you to see, you know, finding that correct bevel and then matching it and you can see the really big divots on this blade right here. So it's going to take a little more time on this side to uh, work all that out. Right, here's this edge here, and I suspect that um, I probably had to take more off of this edge because of the heavy divots there. But again, you can see it's not perfect, but it is a whole lot better than it was. So I'm going to show you how I balance the blade now, and I might have to uh, adjust that just a little bit. So you can buy these little... Uh, blade balancer things. This is a plastic one, and I find that this one is actually a little more sensitive, maybe because it's more lightweight. Uh, this is an Oregon one. It's made out of metal, but it just pivots on top. Um, I'll post a link to these below the video. Uh, but this is convenient because this has a completely round hole, so you just set the blade on the round hole and see how and you can look on the bottom, and that side over there is slightly heavier because you can see it's tilting that way. And indeed, uh, let me see which side is which. Yeah, this is the end that I had to take a little more material off of, so it makes sense that that would be... Oops, got to center it on there. So that makes sense. That would be the heavier side. So uh, to solve this, you just keep grinding on the heavy side and then uh, until it balances. All right, after about 20 more or so passes on this side, uh, we're going to see how well it balances this time. And uh, it's a little windy right now, but it looks to me... It looks to me like it's about the same, so I'd say that blade is balanced. All right, so I'm going to hit all the parts of this blade and the blade adapter with a wire brush to get some of that corrosion off of here, because this has seen a lot. And any metal-to-metal -metal parts, I always... Uh, Put some grease on them. And this goes on this way. And you always want the beveled side of the blade towards the deck. And both sides of the blade adapter. That's got a lot of corrosion on it. 
Rust is a great sealant, but when you break the bond, that's when it turns into pretty corrosive. Line up the holes. I am going to get a touch of, just a touch of grease to put on these bolts. Not a lot. They do have a little corrosion on them. I don't want them to seize up. All right, gonna put the blade stop on here. And because this is a, uh, has a turned edge, I'm gonna put a little shim up behind here. So hopefully the blade adapter won't turn out. All right, turned out a little bit, but not, not as bad as it was. According to the owner's manual, the torque spec is uh, five to six kilogram meters that relates uh, that translates to 32 to 44 foot pounds so I've set my torque wrench for 40 foot pounds this bolt seems to have a lot of resistance I know it's not cross threaded haven't reached the torque yet on the top one. I just wanted to get it fully seated. Yep, and that's what I was afraid was going to happen. My little bolt, I mean my blade, stop moved. I'm going to set this down here because this edge of the lower deck is not, doesn't have a, uh, as much of a uh, roll as the front of the mower does, so hopefully. If you heard that click, that was 40 foot-pounds. Listen for it again. All right, there it was right there. Just a little click, so that's 40 foot-pounds. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down in the comments section. I try to uh, answer all of them. I read all of them, and I appreciate you watching and uh, commenting on this. Uh, remember, uh, this is the way I do it. There's other ways that people do it. Uh, I just want you to be safe. Take off that spark plug boot. Keep your fingers out of the way. Don't cut off your foot. Just be careful. Um, if you learned something, please push the like and subscribe button, and I can make more of these videos. Remember, I'm the lawnmower lady, and as I'm fond of saying, Mo happy. Thanks for watching.